Welcome back. It is Monday, May 1st in the NBA. My three favorite picks are on the way. Let's recap yesterday at 0-3 day. Look, I don't like recapping bad days, but let's talk about why it went 0-3. Mitchell Robinson's under. That was a bad call for me. I did expect Julius Randle to play. Randle didn't. Robinson crushed it. Now, Draymond Green's over. If he gets an assist taken away from him, and what ends up? Ends with 22 on the hook. We needed 23. Ends with 22. That assist ends up being what cost us. And then Warriors Kings, same game parlay. Didn't go down. Fox did not show up. We needed 20 points from him. He scored 16. It just it feels like yesterday probably could have been a two in one day, but 0 and 3, that's just how the luck has been shaken out for us. But let's talk about April as a whole and let's recap it. Because regardless of if it's a great month or a bad month, I want to recap how we did. And April wasn't great to us. We had 25 wins, 29 losses, down 6.39 units. Now, if you look at just strictly the comments, you could swear I was down 150 units. But obviously, it was not a great month. It was our second losing month. And in fact, I'll bring up, you know, how we've done all year long. You know, if you look from October, you know, to January, we were dominating. February was an okay month. But then March. March and April haven't been kind to us. We're down a little bit of money, but I have to remind people, it's a marathon, not a sprint. We're not going to make money every single day. I know April wasn't great, but I still have a lot of confidence in the reads. April was my worst month betting the NBA in over two and a half years. So I think the regression is going to come our way. It was, we had terrible luck that month and you're not going to cash many bets without a little bit of luck. We had some bad reads in there. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. There were some bad reads by me, but I still think that we're going to dominate May. I like this new month. I'm feeling good vibes coming. And I just, I know a lot of people are doubting me. A lot of people think I can't, I can't pick winners, but I think May is going to be a big month and you have to stay tuned for it because we're going to dive into our favorite plays and it's going to start with this first one and the Sixers and Celtics game. Let's make May a big, big month for us. And we'll start with this guy, Marcus Smart. I like his over 11 and a half points, minus 106 on FanDuel. Now, personally, probably play this to minus 120. We know lines are get pretty sharp as the season goes on, especially in the playoffs. I don't expect this to go up to 12 and a half, honestly. I think 11 and a half is a good line for him and I think Smart can crush that. Now, we're not asking Smart to go out here and drop 25 points. No, that's not what we're asking. 12 points is something he could get in a quarter. He could do that in the first half, or he could maybe need some cheese at the end and get a couple free throws. But let's talk about Smart. And honestly, this is one of the harder games to bet on because we don't really know Joel Embiid's status. I don't want to come out here, give you a Robert Williams play, Al Horford play, and then get Embiid, who is currently doubtful to play, just randomly get ruled in. And we've seen guys be doubtful. We've seen guys be ruled out, and then they randomly end up playing that night. Now, while I don't think Embiid plays tonight, I don't want to bet on a big man just because of that reason alone. But I think Marcus Smart sees his minutes regardless. In their last series versus Atlanta, we saw Smart score 22, 10, 19, 24, 14, and 11 points going over in four of six. Now, two of those games, he ended, you know, a point or two short. But I do want to say that the Hawks series is going to be much different from the Sixers series. The Hawks was a much faster paced, higher scoring games. These won't be as high, as high scoring. But I also think in that same breath that you're going to see a lot more defense be shown against Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. So those guys could have their way against that Hawks defense they could score 30 any given night one of them is normally scoring 30 or 35 however that's not really going to normally i don't think happen against the sixers they've done a great job stopping jason tatum in the past they'll put a lot, a lot of guys on jalen brown too so i think guys like marcus smart guys like Derek white malcolm brogdon some of those guys are going to have to step up for the sixers team against the sixers and have the celtics team score some more points and we've seen this season versus philadelphia smart has played decently scored 10 14 and 17 points going over in two of three he consistently saw at least 32 minutes against the hawks in those series they have two games where he scored like 26 to 27 he had foul trouble in those games so if he can avoid a little bit of foul trouble which i think he can here i think he's going to see his field goal attempts i mean he should get 10-ish field goal attempts and we just ask him to knock down some shots could get a couple free throw attempts we know smart sometimes flopping and he gets to the free throw line we won't complain about it there but we've also saw smart shoot a lot better at home shot 3.4 percent better from the field 5.2 percent better from three and 10 and a half percent or percent better from the free throw line so if he gets the free throw line showed a better chance at hitting them down when they're at home they're obviously at home today i I think they got a good chance. I think Smart can get us 12 points. Like I said, we're not expecting, you know, Smart to go out here and drop 20 points, although he's capable of doing that. All we're asking for is 12 points. I think he gets off. If he can get off and see his first shot go in, maybe his first two shots go in, should easily clear this line. But we know Smart, he's not afraid to keep chucking it up. I don't mind his PRA line, but I think he's going to need 12 points to get there. So I like Marcus Smart. Give me his over 11 and a half points. It can hit in the blowout, which just could be a blowout. But either way, I think Smart can get us 12 points. We'll take his over as my first play of the day. Now, as for our second play, it's going to be a much higher line. But this guy's going to shoot probably a lot more times than Marcus Smart because it's Devin Booker. I like his over 29 and a half points, minus 115 on bet 365. Now, I'd play this to right around minus 125. Don't really want to take 30 and a half, but if you have to, you can. But like I said, these lines are sharp when you get to the end of the year. And I think Booker can easily clear this line. But let's talk about how he did in game one. Now, obviously, the Suns got blown out in that game towards the end. And we saw Booker score 27 points, shot 10 for 19 from the field. He did play 40 minutes, which was the most on the team. He was on pace to play 40 
five minutes, but him and the Suns obviously rested their starters the last five minutes, so he did not play those last five minutes. Although if he played them, he probably would have hit this over. Now, in that game, we saw, or you should look back to the last series. In game one against the Clippers, we saw the Suns lose that game as well. Booker scored 26 points in that game, 10 of 19 shooting. And, he, you know, it's almost, it's like we're not asking history to repeat itself, but he then proceeded to score 38, 45, 30, and 47 points, hitting the over in the last four games in that series. So, while I'm not saying, hey, you should just bet on history to repeat itself, I do think that Booker has a chance to go out there and score 30 points, and he's kind of needed because the Suns are a team that lack a lot of depth. They don't really have a lot of guys that can go out there and get their shots. It's normally Booker and Durant, and that's kind of what they're got to do. Now, I don't think the Suns are so concerned about going down 0-2 in this series. Obviously, if you ask the Suns, hey, would you rather go down 0-2 or be tied 1-1 going back home? They obviously prefer one to one, but I still think Booker is going to play a lot of minutes and Durant is going to play a lot of minutes too. These are the two guys that are going to be asked to score a lot of points. Now in game one, we saw Durant score 29 points, but did have seven turnovers. He talked about in this press conference, he wants to avoid, you know, having all those turnovers, passing the ball more. And I think Booker's going to get his open looks. I mean, the guys that are going to be out there with them, CP3, Aiton, Okogi, you got, you got Torrey Craig, all these guys aren't really high volume shooters or scorers. So they need Booker and Durant to dominate the ball and score a lot of points. And Booker should shoot well above 20 times today now booker attempted 20 plus points or 20 plus field goal attempts in 32 games this year well he scored 30 plus points in 21 of those 32 that includes the postseason when we saw him attempted 20 plus easily against the clippers i think you're going to see booker attempt a ton of field goal attempts today i don't see him just shying away from just not shooting the ball it's not like the nuggets are a team that's going to double team him they've been they've defended pretty well in the past but this is still Devin booker going to play 40 plus minutes today going to probably shoot 20 plus times he's good at getting to the free throw line at two and he had 14 drives in game one the most on his team and he's going to drive and Jokic obviously can't get into foul trouble they can't afford that so I'm going to see Booker do his thing get to the free throw line knock down his shots get his open mid-range looks I think he gets 30 plus points I know it's a high line but it's Devin Booker in a game that the Suns really do want to win here I think he's going to shoot a bunch I think he can get us 30 plus points last game got close to it didn't play the last five minutes we know when the ball is it he's going to be on the court a lot more I mean come on if the guy's going to play a lot of minutes shoot the ball a lot we're just asking him to knock down some shots I think he certainly can do that 30 plus points a lot of points to ask for but I think Booker can get it done take us over 29 and a half points now from our third and final play gonna do a bankroll builder it's in the Suns and nuggets game but it's just a little bit different we got a lot of legs here a little bit better value than normal let's talk about these seven legs because there's much more than i do but I think all got a good chance. Now, let's talk about each seven of them. Devin Booker, 20 plus points. Got a couple Durant legs in there, 20 points and six rebounds from him. Jokic, 20 and 10. And then uh, Jamal Murray, 20 points and five assists. Now, now this is plus 210 on drafting. So we're going to risk one unit to try to win back 2.1. Now, normally I'm not a guy that puts in a ton of different legs here in a parlay. Normally you're looking at me sit, putting three or four legs in here, but it feels like we're relying on the four guys that are going to shoot the ball a lot and have the ball in their hands a lot. And even if this game is a blow up, this could still hit. Now, let's talk about each of these legs and while you can limit it maybe you pick your three or four favorites that you like and you don't go for the plus 210 value but there will be some people that say, yo, this is crazy. Why are you betting seven legs to win plus 210? Well, in game one, this hit easily. I mean, Durant easily got his points. Booker got his points. The only close leg was Jokic, and he had 24 points. And so we only need 20 out of him today, and he missed a ton of easy shots. So I think we got a good chance here, and hopefully this cashes for game two. Now, if Booker doesn't get us 20 points, I'm going to be down bad. I won't lie to you. If he can't get us 20 points, we obviously would lose his over 29 and a half points. I think he'd get us at least 20. And if you're on Fanduel and you want to take out Devin Booker and Durant, I wouldn't call you crazy. You don't need to risk those two guys to get 20 plus points not great value there a lot better value on DraftKings. but let's talk about durant though in game one we talked about him at 29 points also had 14 rebounds in games in all the games versus the clippers he had 20 points and six rebounds so now hit this in all six straight we know he's going to play a lot of minutes he's going to also have a, a lot more responsibility re rebounding the ball with eight and having to go out there and guard yeah, nikola Jokic. so i think durant gets us at least six plus rebounds and he's kevin durant he should get us 20 plus points i'm pretty confident in that now let's talk about Jokic. well game one like i said pretty good game 24 points 19 rebounds rebounds i think eight offensive rebounds missed a lot of those easy tip-ins we saw all that eight and eight and you, you if you saw the clip where eight and just wasn't really contesting the rebounds that Jokic was just tipping it in but we're not counting it we need 10 rebounds and 20 points out of him we saw this season versus Jokic. he had two or versus that or phoenix Jokic had 41 points 15 reps and 21 points 18 rebounds now the points could be a little bit close but i think Jokic is going to be good enough to get these points you're going to not see the denver or you're not seeing phoenix going to double him 
should get his open looks. And look, I think he can score against eight and 20 points. I don't necessarily love his over 25 and a half, 26 and a half points, but I think he can get his 20 and then 10 rebounds. He's done that in four straight playoff games. So yeah, okay, we're confident in you. You're obviously a two-time MVP. I think you can easily get 20 and 10. And then Jamal Murray is the final guy we need to count on. Look, the Suns, no answer for him in game one. He had 34 points, nine assists. And if you look back to that Minnesota Timberwolves series, well, 18 points and five assists in all five of those games. So the assists for there, I think he gets those assists. If we're lucky, we'll see him dishing it off to, to Nikola Jokic, getting some points there. I think there's going to be some, you know, kill two birds with one stone. And he's going to shoot a bunch. 18 points in all five of those games against Minnesota. That was a tough matchup for him. They had a lot of great perimeter defenders. But you look at, he finished short twice of the 20-point line, 18 and 19. This could be a like Jamal Murray, 20-plus points. Could be one that hurts us, but I expect him to shoot a bunch. I mean, you saw him 24 field goal attempts in game one. They had no response for him. And I don't see them having really an answer for him here unless they bench Chris Paul they just don't have the great perimeter defenders that you know a lot of the that the Timberwolves had so we're going to see you're going to see Jamal Murray go out there and shoot a bunch I think he has 20 points regardless of if he shoots terribly from the field he's going to get to his mid-range looks get his open opportunities and he's going to get to the free throw line more than two times likely and you saw Murray, Murray score 16 and 26 for Phoenix this season in the regular season but the one game he went under only played 25 minutes shot 13 times I think Murray shoots a lot more we know he normally turns it up in the postseason so I think he got a good chance here. Plus 210, all seven of these legs having a good chance of hitting. It's going to be a fun thing to sweat out, at least if you're going to watch this game, which this game should be fun. This is going to be a great series, I think, for these bankroll builders. Plus 210, I think we had a chance at it. So I'll take a stab at it. Devin Booker, 20 plus. Durant, 20 plus in six plus rebounds. Jokic, 20 plus points in 10 plus rebounds. And then Jamal Murray, 20 plus points and five plus assists. They've got a chance here. We're risking just one unit to win back 2.1, hopefully recoup some of our losses. But it's not like we're trying to force, you know, more legs in here just to win back more money. I ought to play this regardless of how we were, if we swept yesterday and went three and out. I think this has a great chance. I'll take my chances at it. Give me that. One, risk one unit plus 210. I think we got a good chance there. Those are my three favorite plays of the day. If you want any sportsbook sign up bonuses? I'll link down below. Let's have a three and no day, bounce back day. We got smart, we got bookers over and points, and then we got the same game parlay. I think we got a great chance. Have a great day. Hopefully, you guys still have faith in me. I'm feeling a great May coming our way. A great start to the week. I'll see you guys back in the next one. This is Austin. I'm signing out. Peace.